Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit three, differentiation, talking about composite, implicit, and inverse functions. Today's topic is topic 3.3, where we're differentiating inverse functions. Enjoy today's notes. All right, welcome to section 3.3, differentiating inverse functions. So the goal today is how do we like find the derivatives of functions that we know are sort of defined as being inverses of one another. So recall, a function's inverse uh, is found by swapping the input and the output values, so swapping that x and the y value. So back in Algebra 2, our pre-calculus, you know, we uh, might have had, say, like an equation like uh, 3x plus 4 is equal to y, and in order to find the inverse equation, right, a common way that we did that was to switch the x and the y, so we would say that 3y plus 4 is equal to x, and then what we would need to do to find that inverse equation is to get that x by itself. So we might say that 3y is equal to x minus 4, which means that y would be equal to x minus 4 over 3. This would be our inverse function. And so sort of a reminder, you know, if we have a function that's called f of x, we generally refer to the inverse, so the inverse, with using this like little negative 1 on the x. So this... If our original function is f of x, our inverse has that little negative one, so that's f inverse of x. Now this can be a little bit confusing for people because that little negative one, depending upon the context, can mean different things, right? We know that sometimes it means it's a reciprocal and sometimes it means it's an inverse. So depending upon what you're looking at, you sort of need to figure out what, you know, what that neg negative one is doing. We know that you know, if it's an exponent on, say, a variable, that that's a reciprocal, that this is the same thing as 1 over x. While if we see it on a function, right, so this, this would mean f inverse of x. So in general, you know, we, would, we would have to figure out, because it's on a function, that this means it's the inverse of the f of x function. So generally, you know, we can see those little negative ones, but we, we need to do a little bit of work in thinking about the context of the problem. Is it a reciprocal or is it an inverse based on whether it's on a variable or whether it's on a function itself? Now, three ways to say the same thing. G of x is the inverse of f of x. So if we're saying that g of x and, in, uh, and f of x are inverses of each other, then we could write that like this. G of x is equal to f inverse of x. So if they're inverses of each other, that means that g of x is the inverse of f of x. Now, back in Algebra 2, Honors Algebra 2 pre-calculus, um, we also found out that to prove that two functions are inverses of each other, that f of g of x would need to equal x if we do that composite function, and g of f of x would need to equal x uh, if we do that composite function. So this sort of comes from like the formal definition, the formal definition of uh, inverse functions. And back in Algebra 2, Honors Algebra 2, we sort of proved the two functions were inverses by doing both this and that. Uh, you might rem remember that's not enough to do one of them. You actually have to do both uh, because sometimes only one of them's true and, and not both of them. Um, but this leads us to finding the derivative of an inverse function. So if I'm taking the derivative of the inverse of f of x, the, way, the rule that we need uh, to use is as follows. It is 1 divided by the original function f, so f prime, the derivative of the original function f, of a composite function f inverse of x. So we notice that this f inverse of x is the input for this f prime function. And if we're evaluating this at a particular number, we know that generally we work from the inside out and then can evaluate uh, going forward. Um, you know, also a reminder in general of like when we are uh, talking about inverses, a really useful thing to remember is that we switch the x and the y. We switch the x and the y. We talked about that above, but for example, if I know for the function f of x, if I know that there's a point, say, 3 comma 2 on the function f of x, that means that on the inverse, I am certain that the x and the y switched, that 2 comma 3 would have to be on that inverse if I switched the x and the y for that coordinate. This comes up frequently in problems like this where we see tables, and we're talking about inverses, where we need to know that, you know, if they give us a particular function, that if we switch the input and the output, that that would be the inverse function's values as well. 
And so we'll see that here in this. Just like the others, the AP exam loves testing us graphically using tables, using equations. They want to make sure that you understand these topics in a, in a bunch of different ways and think about how they're interconnected from each other. Um, and so tables is a really good way to do that, uh, you know, say outside of a graph or outside of a, uh, a function itself. So um, let's see what we know. The table below gives values of a differentiable function f uh, or differentiable functions f, g, and f prime at selected values of x. Let g of x be defined as f inverse of x. So we know that g of x is the inverse of f of x. Okay, uh, we've got this table. Looks like we've got some x values from 1 to 4. We've got f of x values. We've got f prime of values. What is the value of g prime of 1? Now g, again, is f inverse. So if we want to find the derivative of g... We're sort of thinking back to our derivative of an inverse function. We're going to be using this equation that is right here. So I'll write that equation just so we have the practice of having it. I encourage you to, to make sure that you're writing the equation down so that you are working on memorizing this. This is one of those ones that, you know, you just got to know for the AP exam, and I encourage you to, to work on memorizing it. Um, we want to know specifically here where at 1, so I'm going to put 1 in for my x value. So... Here's what we know. We need to find first, if we're trying to evaluate this, we need to find f inverse of 1. Now, this is not the same thing as saying x is 1 and so f of x is 3. In fact, you know, if we take a look at what this table tells us, if I look at these values that are right here, and we think about what we sort of did up here, right, knowing that we switched the x and the y values, let's think about what we know. We know that for the f of x equation, that 1 comma 3 is on that, uh, on that equation, which means that on the inverse equation, 3 comma 1 is on that. But we are looking for f inverse of 1. We're not looking for, for a 3, so this is actually not a particularly helpful 1. I'm actually looking for places where the y value of f of x is equal to 1. So for example, if I take a look at this second one right here, the second line, and we think about what we, what we see, we see our second point for f of x that it's at 2 comma 1, right? From right over here, right, we see that. And that means if we take the inverse, that it would be 1 comma 2, right? If we switch that x and the y value. So because of that, we know that for f inverse, if the input is 1, the output is 2. So this is going to equal 1 divided by f prime of 2, because f inverse of 1 was 2 from looking right here. Now for f prime of 2, we can just look at the table. Here is f prime. We want to look when x equals 2, so that's going to be negative 2 for that denominator. So this is 1 over negative 2 or negative 1 half for our answer for number 1. Number two, write an equation for the line tangent to f inverse at x equals 1. So we already know the a derivative, right? We, we know the derivative. We know the derivative was uh, negative 1 half. Um, if we're writing the equation of a line tangent, we use that point slope form, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, and we need the point and the slope. They give us the x value. So we need the y value for the inverse, right? And so if we look at our inverse equation, we know when x equals 1 that the y value is 2. So the coordinate that we're talking about, again, is 1 comma 2 for this. So if I have, uh, for this one, I've got my point, I've got my slope over here. So using this point slope form, we're going to say y minus 2 is equal to negative 1 half times x minus 1. That would be my equation for the tangent line uh, of f inverse. Again, sort of the tough part of this is recognizing that we can identify the f of x from looking at this table, but to find f inverse, we've got to switch those x and y values. And sometimes it's useful to make that like a little side table for yourself, just to, as a reminder uh, of those inverse values. Number three. Ooh, looks like a lot of words. Uh, let g be a differentiable function such that g of 12 is 4, g of 3 is 6, g prime of 12 is negative 5, and g prime of 3 is equal to negative 2. The function h is differentiable at, uh, and h of x is equal to g inverse of x for all x. What is the value of h prime of 6? So same as before, we're going to use uh, our equation, which we had before. Um, if we're trying to find h prime of 6, h prime of 6, uh, since this is equal to g inverse of x, this is going to equal 1 over g prime of g inverse of 6, using that equation from above. And so we could take a look and see what we see, um, but 
you know, notice this doesn't tell us directly any of these inverse equations. We, we only have two coordinates that they gave us, right? They gave us two coordinates for g, so we know that for g of x, we know that uh, the coordinate 12 comma 4 is on it. We also know that 3 comma 6 is on it. That means they told us, they're telling us subtly here that if we take the inverse, those x's and the y's are going to switch, which means that I know that 4 comma 12 is on the inverse and 6 comma 3 is on the inverse. Conveniently for us, that's the one that we're going to need because we need g inverse of 6. So that means the output is going to be 3. So this is going to be 1 over g prime of 3. And we know g prime of 3 because they told us that. That's equal to negative 2. So this is also equal to 1 over negative 2. Hey, that's the same answer that was up here. Uh, weird. Weird coincidence. So negative 1 half is our answer for number 3. Number 4. If f of x is equal to 3x cubed plus 1 and g is the inverse function of f, what is the value of g prime of 25? Well, if we want to find g prime of 25 using that equation from before, because we know that these are inverse functions, this is going to be equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of 25. Now, this is different from previous ones, right? Here they gave us a table with a bunch of values. Here they gave us a bunch of individual values. We got nothing here. We only have the function. So my question is, you know, how do I find f inverse of 25? Well, we know that the, that means that if, if 25 is the input for the f inverse function, that means it needs to be the output for the f of x function. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do some side work over here. I want to say 3x cubed plus 1 equals 25. And I want to know what x value makes that's true because that's going to be then uh, the output for this f inverse of 25. So if we subtract 1 from both sides, we get 3x cubed is equal to 24, which means that x cubed is equal to 8. If we take the cube root of both sides, that means that x is equal to plus or minus the uh, cube root of 8, which is 2. So it could be plus or minus 2. 2 for that. So we have two specific x values where that could be the case. Um, and so we'll take care of both of those. The question then is, um, you know, what's our derivative function? Because we're going to need f prime as well, right? And so if we take the derivative of this, f prime of x by the power rule is 9x squared, derivative of 1 is 0. So what have we got? Well, we've got now two cases to deal with. One is when, uh, you know, one is the, the case where we have 25 comma positive 2, and the other is the case where we've got 25 comma negative 2. So in the first, we've got, so I guess I'll separate these so we can keep those clear. Um, we've got the slope, which is g prime of 25, so I'll, I'll even leave that as it is. Uh, that's going to be 1 over f prime of uh, f inverse of 25. So that's f prime of 2. And if we plug 2 into our f prime equation, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 9 is 36. So that's going to be 1 over 36. That would be the value of g prime of 25 when, uh, you know, when the output of that is 2. We can do the same idea here uh, for negative 2, so that's going to be 1 over f prime of negative 2. And in this case, because it's being squared, that's still 4. 4 times 9 is 36. And so we still get 1 over 36, actually, in both of these cases. So even though there are two uh, places where the uh, inverse is 25, is, is 2 and negative 2, both of those end up having the same derivative. They have the same slope of the tangent line, which is 1 over 36 for problem number four. Um, that's actually it for this particular one. Uh, you've got some practice. Uh, we've got some work with some tables, some big tables, some individual values, some trig functions, and then as usual, test prep at the end. Please come to class with any questions that you've got. Good luck on your practice. Check your answers and good luck on your mastery check. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.